where I left it at at this point is that I'm demonstrating here that when we try to get all of the documents, we will either get a, a failure or success. Well, success is not just a keyword that says it worked. Success is an object in JSON format that gets returned to us in pouch automatically. And what that has is the complete data of what at the moment I requested, which was everything. There are then rows of data, so far in my case five, which from zero to four, which has a document, which has a title, which has all of the fields that we created. When I'm filling this in here, it might pop up with the others, such as year or underscore ID. So show me the ID of this particular document, which document the second document from the data I'm retrieving. That's what that's saying. And then to confirm, that will show up here in the console. Right there. The second comic is alphabetically Amazing Spider Man, no spaces, no dash, no the, plus the year, plus the number. 1999, number 99. So the point of that is we're starting to retrieve the data so that then we can fully prepare it to be displayed on screen. <coughs> So the purpose of this function is to get the data and, and prepare it in terms of alphabetize it, give me all of the data of that document, not just its ID. Once I have that, we can display it on screen. So this show comics prep was just there temporarily to see something. We, we don't need it there. So remove your actual function call. We, we're not calling, we're not using the function yet. Go ahead and remove that. What we're doing is, in this else here, let's simplify this just to say success.rows. This is this will give us an, a, an output saying all of the objects. We've got five objects, two objects, 20 objects. Uh, entries. Pass this data into a function that will then display the data in a readable way on screen. Right now it's in the console, it's, it's raw data, it's not user or human readable. So we'll have another function that its purpose is to take this data and make it look nice and put it into the table on screen. We don't have it invented this function yet, but we're going to have function show comics table. Function show comics prep. This function <coughs> prepares the data. We've prepared it enough. We're now we're going to pass it into the function that its purpose is to show it in the table. Well, what we're passing over is success.rows, what I've got up here. We're passing all of the data, all of the rows of data, all of the entries, all of the documents. We're passing it into this function, comics table, show comics table. Outside of the prep function, we will define that function. A function to take the semi-processed data and display it on screen. I guess we don't have to say semi-processed. A function to take the processed data and display on screen in a table, which is the name of the function we just mentioned up here. Here we used it and then supplied an argument or a parameter or an option. We were passing data into the function. So when we define the function over here, we have to define it in terms of it's getting something put into it. It's getting data passed into it. It's getting data put into it. This can be named anything you want. I'm going to go with data to make it obvious. Data is expected to be put into this function in order for it to work. 
data is being put into this function right there. From a successful retrieving of all docs, we, pa we, we pass in some data to the function. Let's define what we do with that data. This is ultimately uh, going to be displayed on screen as HTML. We're going to write some JavaScript to take these various pieces of data, create an HTML table out of it, and then display it on screen. So a common way to do this, and the way that was done in the example in the JSON lecture, is um, create a string that will have the HTML table and the data to display on screen. If I remember, I will go to an example of a website. Uh, the, the actual uh, Marvel Comics website, they have a database of uh, you know their movies and such, the Marvel movies, and we can connect to that database and retrieve information. Who was the director? Who was the star? Huh? the budget, etc. We can connect to their database and it's going to give us back information in JSON format. So very tangibly here we're going to deal with, well, okay, we've got JSON data, what do we do with it? Because it's, you know, raw information, we want to display it on screen. So first we'll create a string, var string equal to quotes paragraph end of paragraph table end of table we're going to create a table in a paragraph and then eventually display this on screen after this part, in the div in the HTML file, display the table created above. We have the L div show comics table. That is our name of our div in the world of JavaScript. That's the object where I want to display this table. So we have the .html method to do that. Whatever we put in this method will be converted into HTML and then we put it into this div. What we're putting is that string, that object. That string has a table, has a paragraph with a table, and then other stuff in a moment. All of this is stored in here. Take that, turn it into HTML, display it on screen. Okay, well, this table for the moment, and then we'll use CSS, this table at the moment is invisible. The default behavior of a table is that the edges, the rows and columns are all invisible. The edges, that is. So we'll add an attribute to table. And whenever we've done attributes, we've had whatever equals quotes, right? We might have p style equals quotes. So. Uh, we're going to have border equals quotes 1. But there's a big problem in what I just wrote here. It's very subtle, but you may see the underlying squiggling, squiggly lines popping up, and it says semicolon expected, which is not helpful at all. But I'm doing what we've done before in that we've got a tag and attribute equals quotes. But there's, a, there's an error here. 
what's happening is that technically what I've got here is saying in JavaScript create a variable named string assign it a value of quote end quote space one space open quote end quote no I meant create a string and assign it to quote end quote and everything in between but what JavaScript is reading here is okay open quote end quote JavaScript command open quote end quote that's why it's saying you need a semicolon there which doesn't make sense this whole thing is a string and we did something like this last time but I didn't bring it up because but now it's very important these should be single quotes because now open quote end quote is the pair and now open single quote close single quote is a pair when I had here double quotes in the middle it reads it as open quote end quote more JavaScript open quote end quote end of statement and that causes a big error so I'll write it in the notes here that basically when you need quotes inside of quotes outer quotes should be one type and inner quotes should be another example like that so it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter you can flip that you could do single quotes as the outer quotes and then inner quotes double quotes but they cannot be the same <clears throat> what would also cause a problem is if I had it single quotes on the outside single quotes on the outside single quotes on the inside because it sees it again there's your pair of quotes single quotes then JavaScript and then further HTML so that would be a problem there too so that's not a problem there one type of quote on the outside one type of quote on the inside we also have back ticks which uh, only like hipsters use but you can use those where in the keyboard is are those on the upper left corner right under your escape key you have the tilde or the little enya symbol and that's then got a back tick that works um, sometimes I see those You can have it like this. Back ticks, double quotes, like that. This is the only special case scenario that when you have some sort of attribute equals something, that that pair of quotes better not be the same as this as the outer pair of quotes, or it will cause problems. As long as they're different, you'll be fine. Pretty much in every language. Yeah, there are instances in every language where you might have one kind of quote in another, so you have to use something different. And uh, in most languages, you can alternate between the double or single quotes. There's a couple languages out there that you have to use a certain kind of quote for a certain kind of thing. But generally speaking, like in JavaScript here, as long as there are different kinds of quotes, you'll be fine. So after the end of that show comics table, uh, let's call again the function show comics prep. Uh, just let me check something here. So we've got we've got our prep to start to retrieve the data. We pass the data into this function which will start to create a table and then we will show the table on screen. 
I invoked or I called function show comics prep to get the ball rolling. And when I see the result in the browser, when I go to view comic, there it is. There it is. You see your table right there? Because there's no data in it. We're starting to build a table, but we haven't put data in the table, but there's the table so far. And depending on what's in the table, the table grows or shrinks. There's obviously nothing in the table, so it's like one dot. So this is incomplete. We're trying to build a table, but we haven't actually displayed, we haven't put anything into the table. Okay, so don't write this yet, but let's say we want to display the title of the comic and the year of the comic and the uh, number. So don't write this yet, but these are at least three of the things I want to display on screen. So we can build a table with rows and columns of that information. We're going to have a column which will display the titles of the comics and then a uh, column that will have the years and then the numbers and then the rows will be the individual comics let me um, let me let me draw it right here just to be obvious about it in that we're going to have a table with a with rows and columns title year number So there's going to be a row, and a row, and a row, and a row. Here's my comic A from 1999, number one. Comic A from 1999, number two. Comic B from 1962, number 12. B from 1963, number 24. See the idea? We're going to build a table, rows and columns, because we have a title field, year field, number field. But wait, we've also got a publisher field, a notes field. Well, what we're going to add is also sort of like a fourth column, like a button on each one of these for more info. I don't want to display all of the information of each comic right away in my table. It'll get very cluttered. I want to display a couple of basic things, maybe just even title and number. We might not need to see the year right away, but I click on I click on this this option here, and then I get a pop up that appears that has the full information. So after clicking, give me the info, the full info of a comic, I get a pop up that has all of the info, including the photo that we're going to add to it eventually, and the barcode we're going to scan. So this table is is going to display basic information about the comic, and then we can display full information about the comic. Well, this information, first of all, here is going to be the the headers of the of the comic. So. I'm going to change things up a little bit here. Quote, space quote, break that table to its own line. Start the HTML code for the table. End the HTML code for the table. str plus equals note the plus equals and hopefully I've noted it enough here that you notice that we've had equals 99% of the time here I have plus equals I don't believe we've done this yet we might have but now it's very important here we're saying create a variable fill it with this and then further fill it with this. A regular old equals in a, is an assignment operator which basically is saying, <clears throat> take the thing on the right 
and put it into the thing on the left. Technically, empty the thing on the left and put the thing on the right into it. We are assigning something new to that. Whatever it was before gets removed and we're adding something new to it. I don't want to do that here. I want to continue to add what's already there. I've started the beginning of my HTML <clears throat> code and I want to add more to it. So whatever's already there, keep it and add the end of my code. If I had this equals, that would cause a big problem because it would dump out whatever is previously there and only add the end of my code, which is completely incomplete. So note the plus equals. We want to keep what's already in the variable and add to it. That's the purpose of the plus equals. sort of going to uh, build a sandwich here. Here's the top of the bread, the bottom of the bread. In between is going to be the good stuff. The, the lettuce and, uh, and, and tomatoes and bacon and whatever, avocado, whatever you want in it. But that's the top and the bottom, the, the beginning of the end. The sandwich begins here and, and ends here. And in between is the, up, is the, is the details. We're going to start the table, end the table. And in between is going to be all of this data that we've pulled out of the database. Create our first row, the headers or headings of our table. So we're gonna to the to the data that's already there. str plus equals quotes. We're gonna create a new row in the table. Start the table, add a row, end the table. A row is defined with tr. This is a table row. This is a row of data. The first row of data has headings, the headings that we want to display of our columns, like I've got in the drawing. Title. Title heading, year heading, number heading, options heading, more info heading, whatever we want. So in this row, then we're going to have th slash th. I'll space these out a little bit maybe for readability. A heading for the title of the comic. <clears throat> Like I said, we're not going to display all of the data right away on this first screen. A person might not want to see every bit of data of all of the comics. They want to see basic data, then click view more info, and then view the full info. So the other piece of data at the moment that I want to display is the, the number of the comic. We can just simplify with number. We will see the title of the comic, the number of the comic, and if I want to read more info about the comic, we will then have a heading for info. Info. If you go then to display it in the browser, we're starting to build a table with a column of title, its number, its info. Then we're going to build another row with the first comic, and another row with the second comic, and the 30th comic, and whatever, based on those. And I'll click Info for the first comic, and I'll get a pop-up that will display all the info. So now our table is not one pixel big. It should save it and run it. You should start to see your first row of data this very first row with a title, a number, and info. So 
what I just showed a moment ago by viewing it in the browser, is that, <clears throat> is that first row of our table that we're crafting. Create our first row, the headings of our table. Create our subsequent rows based on all the comics we pulled from the database. So we're going to add to the string str plus equals quotes. We need a new row, tr. We've got a new table row. TD, table data. TH is for headings. Create our first row, headings of our table. Well, and now TD is data, table data. It is now the actual individual cells of that, of that particular comic. We created three headings at the top, three columns, th, th, th. We're going to have here three cells that correspond. There are three cells in this row because there are three headings in the first row. The first cell corresponds with title, the title of the comic. We're passing in data. We're passing in data to this function. The zero width comic, the first comic. It is a document with a title. Show me the title of a document, which document the first document, the zero width position. In the second column, there is data from the zero width document with a number. This info column is not one of the fields. It is a button that we will press to make a pop-up to show me the rest of the fields. So we can create an icon with this code here, uh, ampersand, pound sign, x, 1, capital F, 4, capital A, C, semicolon. This creates an icon. It's like a little speech bubble emoji thing. So we'll have a row displaying the title of the first comic with then the number of the first comic and then an icon to sort of like read more. If you save it and run it, you should see your first comic. The title and the and the number. Let me check on mine. If I go to view, there's my first row here. <clears throat> Title, number, and the icon. Well, the idea here is on track, but if I'm saying we're going to see the title of the data of this object or the number of the of this object, that is the correct syntax, but it didn't actually display the title. 
or the number? Do you think perhaps why it didn't actually display the title? Why did it display literally what I wrote there instead of the actual title? It's a string. It's a string. Yeah. We created here in quotes. Everything in the quotes is a string literal. Literally display what's in the quotes. So it displayed this. We want this to be processed as JavaScript, and then the rest is HTML. This is also JavaScript. Process that as JavaScript, and then the HTML. So let me do this. Don't do it yet. Let me just do it. End quote plus plus start quote end quote plus I'll back up and talk about it slowly what I'm doing plus quote and then now what we've got is we've got HTML and then JavaScript and then HTML and then JavaScript and then back to HTML now I didn't write anything meaningful in the number of that comic um, but I did for these other comics so it says undefined because I didn't save the actual number of the comic uh, let, let me just do one more here ARP man number one, uh, I just want to show this before I want to just show this quickly before I, sh I explain what I'm doing here. Uh, there it is right there. So, okay, uh, I created a comic, ARP Man, and uh, number one. So I'm seeing the title and the number instead of it saying row zero dot title and row zero dot year. It's actually displaying the data. It's processing the data. And uh, what I did was, which I'll back up and we'll do in a moment, I wrote some HTML. I ended the HTML plus then I wrote some JavaScript plus then I wrote more HTML plus then I wrote some JavaScript plus more HTML this one then was HTML so I didn't need to escape it but then now it's not this part is not in quotes anymore so it's not going to write that literally anymore it's gonna process it it's gonna get the title of this document of the first comic and then it's going to continue the code and then continue the rest. Let me back up so we can actually do it. You see the difference? All of it is red because all of it is a string. So it's not getting processed like JavaScript. It's getting processed like HTML. So I want to end the HTML at a portion and then continue with JavaScript. Then I want to end the JavaScript and continue with more HTML. End that and then continue with more JavaScript. So the way we're doing that is here. We start the HTML, end quote, space, plus, space. So now we're saying create some HTML and then end here. Add JavaScript. We're done with the JavaScript, space, plus, quote, then continue more HTML from here to here because then I need to process more JavaScript. So we end quote here, space plus. I need to process this, process this as JavaScript. End of that, quote, then continue HTML. And then HTML ends there. The row ends. That cell ended a new cell begins, the icon appears, the row, the table, the data, the cell ends, then the row ends. And then what continues is the, the rest of the end of the table. Create a subsequent, subsequent row based on the comics pulled from pouch. In this case, I'm showing the zero with comic from the data that I pulled. So the last one isn't considered a string. The last one here? Yes. It's still a string, yes. Everything in the quotes is a string.
because this part right here, no quotes, JavaScript, plus the string, which ends right here. So all of that is the rest of the string, yes. And again, if I've got four comics, I put data four, it'll give me the uh, data three, it'll give me the fourth comic. Zero, one, two, three, the fourth comic. So if you've saved a fourth comic, it will show me the fourth comic in my table. An amazing journey. I never saved the, the number of it, so it doesn't display it. There's my icon, which doesn't do anything, but that'll be clickable so that I get a pop-up to display the rest of the info. Okay, well, if, if I've got that as my first comic, obviously what I'm going to do is copy and paste it and do it for my second comic, and my third comic, and my 90th comic, and my 1,000th comic? No, because right now I have five comics, later I'll have 25 comics. I'm not going to manually put in all my comics here, because right now I've got these four comics, and then tomorrow I have five comics. I'm not going to reprogram my app every time I've got a new comic. We are going to use a a conditional statement for it to automatically loop X number of times based on how many comics I have so that I don't have to manually come in here and write every comic. That, that would not make any sense at all. I'm going to use a, a loop, a conditional statement that will do it for me. This is one of the great things computers do. If you create the loop, if you create the algorithm correctly, it'll just do it blindly automatically over and over two times 200 times 2000 times but as long as we've set up the algorithm as long as we have set up the proper coding technique it will do it right so the smarter way before that line there create a conditional statement to loop through the number of entries in our database display and uh, continue to add to the string to display on screen. This line down here um, is still going to end the table. This line down here is still going to ultimately display that on screen. This line up here still begins our table. This line here is still going to um, create our very first row, which is not going to change. It's always going to be title, number, info. But then we have to do something to make this be smart enough for it to do it automatically for first comic, second comic, sec third comic, fortieth comic. So we have a for loop. And for loop. That iterates over the number of items in the database. For a certain number of items, do the following. For three items, create three rows. For 13 items, create 13 rows. For 30 items, create 30 rows. So on the condition that we have two items, create two rows. On the condition we have 30 items, create 30 rows. And the way this works is we set a variable here 
i for index equals to zero. Start with the zeroth item in the array. Now, a for loop is very different than the code we've written before if you're not used to it, because we have a semicolon in the middle of the statement instead of at the end of the statement. But this is just the way it is, because we're defining where do we start our loop from the beginning? Zero. Um, how far do we go? We go from i until we reach 5, because I've got 5 entries, semicolon, and then i++. plus plus. Start with the 0 with item in my database, do something, increment to 1. This is going to check, first of all, is 0 less than 5. Is 0 less than 5? Yes. So let's do what's in here. It's then going to become plus plus, it's going to add 1. 0 becomes 1. Is 1 less than 5? Yes. Yes. So we do the loop again. 1 becomes plus plus 2. Is 2 less than 5? Yes. Is 3 less than 5? 4 less than 5? Eventually 4 plus plus becomes 5. Is 5 less than 5? Yeah. No, 5 uh, is equal to 5. So it'll do it one more time. 5 plus plus becomes 6. So eventually we reach our limit. We we've gone past uh, our, our limit of 5. So it stops. This loop stops and continues with the rest. No more, no more rows. OK, well, if we have 25 comics, it'll do it 25 times. If we have 255 comics, it'll do it 255 times. But again, here's an example that I have currently five comics, and then tomorrow I'll have six comics, and then later I'll have 12 comics. So there's a way for it to automatically know how many comics we have. Not for us to put a value, that won't work. That'll only work you know, twice when we add two comics. But we have a way here, data.length. This data up here, this is all of the data we got from the database. We can check the length property, which is how many things in the database. Start at 0, go until we get to 7. When I add another comic, start at 0 and go to 8. When I add 12 more comics, start at 0 and go to 20. So that will automatically check how many comics are in the database. Using data.length, the algorithm knows, in quotes, how many times to loop and create a row. Okay, well, this was the dumb way of doing it, 0 or 1 or 2 or whatever. We need to cut this. We need to move this into the loop. This loop is going to re repeat itself x number of times. So this that we said here, create, create our subsequent rows, cut that. Don't copy and paste. Cut and paste. Move it into the for loop. We should not have two of these row builders. Okay, so create a, create a brand new row x number of times. Now that's still same, but do it x number of times for my first comic. Okay, it did it five times. But it did it for the same comic five times. Can you set a infinite number rather than say length? I think so. Yeah, there should be a way to do infinite. You can kind of trick it by saying um, greater than zero. Start at zero. 
as long as we have more than zero or greater, well, start at you know start at negative one. I think that's more accurate. Zero is greater than negative one, and zero will always be greater than negative one, and zero will become one, which is greater than negative one. So that's a way to create an infinite loop. In this case, we don't want infinite loops, but that's a possible way. So we saw here that it yes. Um, would it be advisable to put a limit on the length of the data uh, due to like, their server size? Sure, that's a, that's a, thing, a consideration as well. Right now, because we're dealing with small bits of data, I don't have it there, but that's a very good point. What if I do have 500 comics saved, and I want to display 20 on the first screen and 20 on the next and so forth? Yeah, well, we would have to reprogram the algorithm a little bit to determine the first 10 display and then create a page 2 and then the next 10 and then a page 3 so uh, that's just uh, kind of up to the individual programmer of how they want to display it we'll do it a simple way for the moment just show all the data because we don't have that much but it would be a, perhaps a little better to to uh, limit it to how much we want to display well we're gonna we're going to replace the 0 with an I and this 0 with an I because this i is defined right here. Create a variable for the moment i set to 0. 0 then gets put right here. Give me the title of the 0 with comic. Give me the number of the 0 with comic. Display it on screen. 0 is less than 5. So do it. Plus plus. 0 becomes 1. Loops back. Oh, uh, less than, right? Um, I is less than. We don't want an infinite loop. Less than. So then it's, okay, is 1 less than uh, 5? Yes, okay, well, I becomes 1 right here. So then it does data 1 title, data 1 number, creates another row. I plus plus becomes 2. Two gets put here, data two, title, data two number. And then that'll loop from row to row for every instance of the comic you have in the database. This is the algorithm. This is the this is the set of instructions to accomplish a task. Once we figure out the algorithm, then it um, does what we told it diligently as many times. View comics. A, a comic, I never wrote a number. AARP Man, number one. Amazing Spider Man didn't write a comic. Amazing Journey didn't write a comic ZZ. I wrote it. I'm going to save a brand new comic here. Beast Boy, number 33 from 1991. Save that. Now, this is not programmed to automatically refresh the table yet. We'll do that in a moment. If I manually refresh it and view the comic, then I get my new comic. So obviously I would think, I'm going to save a brand new comic and it'll automatically update. Nope, we never programmed that. Computers are dumb, because we didn't tell it what we wanted. Here's another comic, let's say, um, Catwoman, a brand new Catwoman just came out this year, number one, 2018. I'm going to save that. I need to refresh it because I didn't do that automatically yet. And I've got a brand new view comic, Catwoman, right there. Let's say I'm saving AARP number two, AARP man number two. From 2000. Save that. Refresh that. View comics. It automatically put it in order for me. Because I save the comics into the database in the order that I save the data. But because then I'm saying in my prep comics function, I'm saying get all the comics in alphabetical order, AARP man number one, and then number two, and the rest. And all of that data came out of the database. I passed it into this function, which then creates a table, 
creates the header row, creates my first row of comics, ends the table, displays the data on screen when we call it here. We're starting to display the rows of comic data. We're going to do a lot of refinement to it, of course, but at the minimum we should start to see this uh, data being displayed. It doesn't refresh automatically. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's do one more thing. Then we'll uh, then I'll check if, if it works for people. The idea here we're building this we're building this row. which displays only the title and the number of the comic and then a little icon to show me more. We need to set up two things here so that that button actually works. Technically, all of these buttons that are, are appearing at the end of the row, they don't know that when we are going to click this one, it means show me the info of this comic. This one doesn't know that when I click that one, show me the data of this comic. This element is not linked to the data in this row. So we need to add a little bit of metadata here that does that, that, that links that element with the row of data. And then we'll check for, uh, for this working. Uh, we're going to add two things. In order for that icon to be clickable, we should give it an identifier. What do I usually mean by that? What's that? Yeah. An ID. I usually mean with an identifier, an ID. Now, however, I didn't say unique identifier, so we're going to do a class. single quotes, because these double quotes would have broken the HTML. Now if an ID is a unique identifier, only one thing in all of the program can have that ID. I'm using a class. I'm setting it up so that all of the rows, that icon, have the same identifier. It's not unique in that all of them will have it. But they will all have it so that I can write JavaScript so that it knows when you click one of these icons, do something. In the class, we will add here btn show comics info. All of those icons at the end of the row will all have a class, an identifier of btn show comics info. Now be careful here because I do it all the time. Comic, comics, plural singular, show comics info. As long as you keep it consistent, comic is not wrong. As long as you have comic er everywhere. Now all of those icons will have a, a, an identifier. And when we write some JavaScript, we click any of those buttons and we'll run a function to show more info. Ultimately, that's the purpose of this. Click one of these icons to run a function to show the comic info. That gets back to what I was saying about how does this icon know that it's the info of this rose comic? Well, here's when we add the second piece of metadata. Let's back up to the beginning of the row. We want this row to be associated with the underscore ID of the data in the row. This displays the pretty title that they wrote. This displays the number and so forth. But we have an ID, underscore ID, which is the unique identifier for this particular data. So we're going to add here a data dash ID equals quotes data. 
we've had data dash data dash uh, what do we have data data roll we've had data roll page or button don't write this we've had um, what else have we had data icon yeah, data icon um, house we had data dash something equals something data dash something is not uh, a uniquely jQuery mobile construct data dash something is an HTML5 <coughs> construct the something is dependent on how it's being used jQuery mobile said we are gonna reserve data dash icon data dash transition data dash role data dash uh, uh, whatever you know all of those that we've seen so far all of those were kind of like reserved by jQuery mobile we therefore are allowed to invent whatever we want data dash kitty cat that'll work we invented this data attribute and then we populate it with something I'm calling it data dash ID attach the data dash ID which we invented attribute to the row so that the icon at the end quote knows what uh, data it's associated with the the icon at the end of any row will know which data to which info to display based on data ID here and this ID comes from the from the ID of the of the particular data data brackets I dot doc dot underscore ID the ID field of our document our current document just like the title of the document the current document or the number of the document the current document here now we're saying store the ID of the comic of the current comic in the data ID attribute perfect right We're going to get the exact same issue as we got earlier when we didn't, when we had these in quotes. We will literally write into data ID this, not the ID, but this. This is another example where we need to break the quotes. And I wanted to write it long, long form here first because this looks really weird when you do it right. So let me do it first. End quote, space, plus, plus, start quote. You will see like a mystery floating single quote here, and then a double quote because that ends here. HTML plus JavaScript plus more HTML plus JavaScript. And there's the pair. That's why I wrote it out first to show, yes, it should look weird like this. Open, open single quote, end single quote because it's this. But close those quotes because then HTML and then JavaScript backing it up again the stuff that's in those quotes should dynamically be processed row upon row dynamically processed means it's got to run as H as JavaScript so we're going to end the HTML portion of it add to it the JavaScript and then add a continuation of the HTML so now that row has been given a unique identifier not an ID but a data attribute that we invented data dash ID it changes every time it goes through the loop start with the zero with row attach the ID there 
continue the row, add, create a cell, and then add the title and continue. Okay, if we run this, uh, we can see that in action somewhere. Let's see, where do we see that? That's attached to the row, and I think we can see it in the element. Let's see, where's that at? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so if you, uh, if you want to see it, uh, you should be able to run it, open F12, and then this time you look at elements. And then if you find that particular row, there is a table that was created with a border. There is our very first row of headings. Then there are all of these rows, in my case, for these comics. This row has a data ID of AA1999-1. Um, that was before I fixed my empty spaces thing, so it's got that spaces. But then after I fixed my empty spaces, here it is, Amazing Spider-Man 1999, number 99. So we've attached the data ID to each of these rows, the unique underscore ID for each of those comics. And then in the particular row, there is a cell with a number, with a cell, with the icon, with the class BP and show comic info. Same thing here. This row alphabetically comes here, ABC. It's got this ID, Catwoman 2018 number one, with the title of the comic, the number of the comic, and then the class, same class, attached to the icon, because all of those are going to be clickable. And this icon will know it means this row because of this ID. This is a version of what was supposed to be done in the JSON lecture in showing the random social networks. We had those social networks stored in a JSON file in a database. And then via the code, you press the button. It would randomly pick one of the networks and display it on screen. Not, not exactly in a loop here, but it would create a string showing the social network. It was like network.social pick or image or something. And then network social dot URL and that sort of thing so this is taking the raw data from the database coming in at JSON in JSON format a machine language format and displaying it on screen as uh, something readable for humans in a table We'll take our second break in just a moment. I'll put my code up to this point in the folder if you need it, but at this point you should be able to create something like this, in that you are seeing a row, I mean a table of information of your comics, at least the title and the number. In my case I get these undefined fields because that was before I realized my mistake, that I wasn't actually saving the number of the comic into the database, which I then fixed. And it's showing row by row alphabetically into the database. General questions on this before we do individual questions. OK, so let's take our second break. It's 8.25. Um, we'll take a break until 8.35. We'll go on. I'm going to put my code into the folder, and then we'll go on.